Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Dark House. Today we're gonna to be working on part two for the X-Men Angel Wings tutorial. Now on part one, we were concentrating on creating the wing using Duik. So on this part two, we're gonna create the scene and we're gonna finish up our comp. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so we're back in After Effects. And now I have included these comp elements, which is my background, my subject, and a, the element that I'm providing, which is the wing complete. And if you can see here, there's some color correction and some other things that are, well, some animation as well on the wings. And uh, we can get into that right now on this composition. So let's create a new comp. Let's, kind of, let's call it fa full comp. 24 frames, seven seconds is fine. So we're gonna start bringing these two elements. I wanna bring my subject and my background. So this background is pretty big. I wanna scale it down, that's about right. And then here is our subject, which is me pretending to be a badass, okay? All right, that looks okay. You know what? Uh, that's fine. So I'm gonna select these two ele elements and I'm gonna create two 3D layers. Now, create new camera. The 35 millimeter is fine. Now, my subject is actually less than seven sec. My subject is less than seven seconds, so I'm gonna reduce the comp to that amount of time. And I'm gonna keep it at like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, so now let's go to four, two views, and I'm gonna move my background just slightly, like that. And I also wanna scale it on the sides, like that. And then my subject, it looks fine. There, let's move it slightly. Right there, looks fine. Okay, so let's duplicate this layer. I did this effect in my Apocalypse Eyes tutorial, so I'm gonna repeat it real quick. We are gonna add a, uh, a lens blur, not the VCC9. Let's add a lens blur. I'm gonna select. I select my pen tool, the first layer, which... And on the first layer, which does not have the, the fast blur, I'm gonna create a mask. Again, this is just to give some depth to our background. I select the mask, feather at about 150 pixels, and set the mask to subtract. Now this I'm gonna put, let's see, 30, see how much. Okay, for some reason my, okay, let me reduce that to third. All right, for now that should be fine. Go to half rest, don't wanna. To... 20. Now, maybe 12 looks, yeah, 12 is about right. Okay, so we have these two, which create the background. And then I have my subject, which is a badass. And now this is what we can do. In this case, this comp has lights coming from the left side. So we wanna recreate that. This depends on you, okay? You guys can recreate four different wings if you guys have the time and if you guys want to. And uh, this is the final step that I was talking to you guys about last time. So I select all my layers. I create 3D elements out of all of them. 
and select. Let's go to view number two. I select the second and third layer of feathers and I'm gonna move them out in C space. That's about right. Now, just the third layer and move it out in C space as well. Okay, so now I actually have depth in the wing. Okay, now here I haven't done any animation. You guys can do this. How? By selecting the position and adjusting it and whatnot. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. So, one thing that I want to do is I want to go to new layer and I want to make a new light, a spotlight. Let's make it blue, that's fine. Intensity, let's go for 120. And we actually have a light now. And if I move it up, my Y axis. Okay. Now let's, let's make it white. Just that. Okay. Now, here, check this out. Right now we have some depth but we want to have shadows behind the feathers. So I grab all my layers and I bring down the properties. I want to go to material options and cache shadows. We're going to turn them on on all the layers. So if, as long as I select them on and I do, I do it on one, it, uh, it creates it on all the layers. So now I have some sort of uh, shadow behind the actual feathers, but since they are not that too much apart You we won't see much of a difference. So let's Let's just make a little bit of More space here okay, Let's go one view Okay, we see the shadow now, okay, but I definitely want to have this Want to have this shadow stand out even more. Okay, that actually looks much, much better. Now, the light, this property you guys can change. Um, let's see, I'm bring out my intensity slightly higher. Okay. Now, I do want to be able to see the whole... Now I'm definitely bumping this up. But I do want to see the, this arm. And again, this does take a lot of time, guys, when you're trying to find the actual proper look, in my case. Uh, when the first time I actually did this fact, and I was getting sort of desperate, not accomplishing it. So started getting a little bit, you know, just going with it, I guess. So here we can change the shadow darkness, let's say to about 75. And we see that now there's some depth. And no, 75 was fine. We can see that there's light being reflected by the elements and there's actually depth on the wing itself. So in my layer, you can see there's more uh, shadow because I separated my layers more. And I even have, instead of three layers, I actually have one layer, two layers. Uh, there's four layers on my element. Um, again, this probably took me over an hour, probably two hours to work on the wing. And uh, that's, just depends on you what you if you guys want to get a proper look or whatever you guys are going for so I want to get my position and also uh, check this out when we select our C property and we move it it no longer rotates because the orientation is the one that is changing now, not the actual Z rotation of the element. So this is the one we actually have to animate, the C rotation, so we can have the an animation. So I'm gonna 
create a a keyframe for that. And I'm gonna bring my position in. Uh, that should be fine. And then now after that, I can just move it just a little bit higher. Let's see how that looks. No, that's actually too much. Put higher. And then just rotate it. Move it up. Higher. And rotate it a bit more. Extend it. So after just making a few keyframes here, all I want to do is basically extend my feather as much as I can and giving it a proper look. Somewhat of, a, of what an actual wing looks like. Let's see if we can accomplish this. Okay, so we're gonna get this sort of movement, okay? Now, in my case, I don't wanna be rendering all these elements, okay? And also be rendering this composition if you guys want to. The reason why I did this on this tutorial is because here, well, let me just show you guys. If I wanna bring my wing, well, it looks actually pretty cool. If I want to bring my wing element, and then I position it, let's say right there, you see how the light is somewhat, in fact, reflecting on the actual wing. So if I want, and if it doesn't look right, I can just simply come here, select my light, move it, position it again, and move it again. Let's see. Definitely might be slightly. Okay, but now you guys can see that we can control the actual light reflected by our element. However, if I duplicate this element and I go to transform and uh, flip horizontal and then I position it on my left side. Now the actual um, light does not match anymore because we have the same light. So either you're gonna have to do some color corrections here or you are going to uh, recreate the wing either two or four different times, which I think it's not a bad idea. You know, just whatever composition, and in this case, if you're either using a different background, um, you guys can just simply create the. Like the fuck, fuck you. If you um, you guys can simply recreate the, the light or reflect the light for that background, and export it, and bring your element already rendered, which is what I'm going to do. In this case, I do like these wings. Actually, you know what? Just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use those wings. Uh, they don't look that bad actually they look sort of large but they don't look that bad okay but for the purpose of this tutorial i'm actually going to you know, grab the anchor point 
And then I'm just simply going to scale it down. Okay. Jesus. Grab the anchor point. And scale it down. Okay, that should be a lot. Right. I'm going to delete this. Duplicate it. Transform. Flip horizontal. And then just move it. Actually, I think it's about there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to bring my wing and I want to position it right there. Okay. And actually my wing is a lot shorter so I'm going to tr trim the comp more. Duplicate this, transform it, flip it horizontal, and move it onto the left side of my screen. So now I have two wings. However, these two wings that we created do not match my scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a hue and saturation. Let's start with this one. I'm going to colorize it. And let's start looking for a bluish, purplish color. I think that should be about right. Yeah. Okay. So now I also want to add a tint effect. But not so much. You know what? Let me see if I can actually do this. Blush color. That looks not so good, not so bad, but I do not want to take too long on this. So I'm just going to copy these and paste that on the left side. They definitely could use a bit more blue, a bit more purplish. Now that's the problem because we are rendering two different items. So let me also add a fast blur. Two pixels. Three. And that should that looks about right. Jesus. Okay. Now that looks about right. <laughs> it was sort of quick and not so quick at the same time. So I'm gonna grab those, paste them there, and now they somewhat look alike. Okay, so now all these elements have uh, 3D, well actually those, these don't have. I need to move these back in C-space. Okay, so. And 
I'm creating some depth among them as well. Now, my backgrounds could also use this thing. Love this. Yeah, I actually like that. I'm actually liking that. Mm. Love my subject as well, except for the fast border. Uh, as is the actual. Okay. So now it doesn't look that bad. So layer new, I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. What can I add to this? Let me add a, uh, let me add a curves. This is just my final color correction to see what outcome I can get out of this. Save this now. Uh, there's this plugin which is called Real Shadow, which I really, 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 really love because with just a few clicks, I have a shadow. See, now I actually have a shadow. So let me position this different. That should be fine. So now I have some a little bit more of that in there. So the whole idea is to sell the realism of a shot. Now this could use a lot more work, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we are gonna try to do it as fast as possible. Uh, let me get a new, let me duplicate this, delete the curves, and add a, Actually, you know what? This curve was looking a lot better when I had it right there. Now this one, a lens blur as well. Let's go ahead and apply a lens blur. Uh, let's go for a 10. 10 should be fine. Now I'm gonna create a mask. Feather. 250 pixels and change the mask mode to subtract. Now we have some depth as well. But let's, let's instead of just changing the whole mask, let's expand. There, that looked good. Okay. So what else can I do to it? Well, this already has a mask. And what if, let's smooth this up. And I add a, a glow. Let's experiment with this a little bit. Now, what glow can I add? No, I don't wanna add a, let me not add a third party glow. So I'm gonna go for, Actually, there's only this glow. And I don't like it. Well, unless we're looking, we're going for a very weird, creepy look. This definitely works, but not for me. Let me add a diffuse glow to see how this looks. No, I'm not really liking it. How about if we go for a trap coat shine? I think I used trap coat shine for the original elements. Colorize, none. We want to have the same colors and that actually looks very cool. Now we're going to add some fractal noise to this. Enable the fractal noise. The speed, evolution speed, that's fine. Tap on a 2D brightness. Bring the brightness down slightly. No, to wherever it was, it was fine. Contrast. 
opacity of the noise. We do want to add a bunch of noise to this. Complexity. Now we want to make this very, very small. Actually. That looks about right. It's the fractal noise. And we do want to bring our ray length. Much. Actually, since I personally like that look a lot more, that's just definitely my taste. Um, but you guys are more than welcome to experiment with it. And also, what I want to do here, my subject, I want to duplicate it. And okay, this does definitely have a lot of. I'm gonna grab my pencil, and then I'm just gonna draw a rough mask around this area. I'm gonna feather out about 100 pixels, and grab this exposure and bring it a lot, a lot lower. There we go. So now, with just that simple mask, I have depth, and I have included my subject more into the actual footage or into the actual comp by showing that my subject is getting some light on the right arm and not so much on the left arm. So we can do this with the wing as well. Let's see what this wing, let's bring our exposure down. Okay. Yep, that looks a lot better. To me so I will set a few keyframes for my camera and move it to the end of my comp okay I already have that and I want to change the orient orientation of it as well about that's fine. Okay. Now we can do a lot more things to this. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to leave, wait. No, we're half rest. Let's bump it up to full rest. You know what? I can't, I just simply can't. Layer new, solid. <laughs> vignette this is just I really really like vignettes it, especially for scenes like this or the scenes that normally I I work on they are very intense so subtract feather it out just bumps up to about right there and I'm gonna bring the opacity to adjustment layers so there we have it it again this could use a lot more work but definitely definitely this looks like we actually spent some time on it so all right guys so that's it for today's tutorial i hope you guys liked it and maybe learned something from it if you did please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button as i will be posting a lot more tutorials and make sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Also, if you guys have any suggestions for any future videos or any future effects, post it in the comments below. I'll be more than glad to recreate them and show you how to do them. As always, I'm Sean Garris. Thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.